How do you spellbind a nation? How do you take over a nation? How do you put people in a position where they they follow you and they'll do anything for you? What you have to do is you have to get into the collective mind of the society. You have to understand what their, their idiosyncrasies are, what their neuroses is, what their insecurities, inclinations and failings are. So for instance, if the country is damaged economically, you get into their mind and you promise them a sense of economic salvation. But you don't just do it in terms of administrative bureaucracy. You have to create a sense of destiny. Max Weber, the German socioanalyst and sociopolitical theorist in the late Victorian era, said that for a leader of a country to bring a nation out of ruin or desti destitution, you can't just solely rely on things like lower taxes and cheap bread prices. The leader must embark the citizens of the nation on a collective quest. This collective quest is more than just getting out of economic turmoil. This collective qu quest is about re-establishing the integrity of the soul of the, the racial or the cultural identity of the society as a whole. One of the reasons I don't see any hope for Ireland in terms of an economic recovery is the fact that the economic recovery methods and methodologies that are spun so far are entirely based on Ireland retaining its economic status in alliance with European and globalist mandates. This is completely uninspiring to the Irish people. You're, you're not simply going to get people to save, their, save them, their own country on such an idea. Now, one of the things I find interesting about Ireland is that we've never, ever, ever been given this. You look at just about every other nation in Europe, they have used it. They've used this idea of a kind of um, a cultural renaissance coupled with economic recovery in order to reconfigure the soul or reconstruct the soul of the society. This has never happened in Ireland. Every kind of uh, economic revival we've had here has purely been based on economic uh, numbers, you know, balance of payments, jobs, unemployment reduction, just general recovery, nitty-gritty bread and butter issues. There's never been a situation in Ireland that I know of, that I can think of, where economic recovery was associated in accordance with a kind of a sense of destiny of the Irish people. In the very early free state, following the War of Independence, between, say, the 1920s and the mid-1930s, you had an attempt to do this, mainly because uh, at the time they were trying to build a new nation and there was a sense of destiny and any kind of internationalism that was connected to that was like, we in Ireland can do the best of what they have everywhere. This came out of the Gaelic League. Now the original Gaelic League was quite different than the Gaelic League today. The original Gaelic League was actually about crafts, guilds and industry. And they used to have an annual exhibition at the RDS and in the Mansion House in Dublin and around the country where they would show uh, potentials of Irish business, industry, mining, agriculture, architecture, engineering, graphic design. Now if you look at Irish graphic design, from the period from about 1923 until about 1935, you get a very good insight into the actual idea of what they were trying to do. They were on a small level trying to couple the Irish identity of an economic future with that of a, a sort of a Gaelic heroic past. A little bit. They didn't go full on like other cultures. When De Valera came in, that changed. It was sort of switched towards Ireland's destiny was that with the Catholic Church. And this gives credence, if you look at the link below, to the idea that Adolf, that, uh, that Eamon de Valera was probably a British agent. 
who was put in there after the, the 1916 uprising and was turned, as they say, by the British intelligence in order to become their man in Dublin, which is probably why he held back the country in the way he did. Now, this is how you, you, this is, this is, this is, this is a, an interesting insight because the country was kind of moving forward during those years, especially te in technology terms. The Ireland had a, a very uh, complex electrification program, which brought electricity to even the most remote parts of the country. And the idea was they used to show uh, images of the Gaelic chieftains on chariots tur turning the turbines of the power stations at Ardna Crusha on the Shannon, bringing electricity to the New Ireland. The stuff works. It works. We don't see it now. What we see is e cold, hard economic facts. We can hold our head high again amongst the, the Europeans and the world. But that doesn't inspire people to start businesses. This doesn't inspire them to put the, the extra effort in. It's a cold, shallow, bureaucratic approach based on a kind of a, a globalist, European, post-colonial insecurity complex. If they really wanted, I can guarantee you, if I was hired by the Irish government as a consultant, then they says to me, how would you, how would you do it so people would have faith in our economic recovery? Well, I would say I would attach it to the Irish sense of destiny. You would actually make it a saga like the Tom or something like that, that you would actually feel like Irish people were, you were tapping into the archival, archetypal memory of the Gaelic culture and pushing that as the, as the force to drive people into a sense of being inspired to want to do something for their country. They're not going to do it for property prices and they're certainly not going to do it for IT. The Irish economic recovery is doomed for one and one simple reason. It is an Irish.